Hello again and welcome. Um, I just thought I'd put something together for um, trying to read some of the data from the Give Energy Inverter. Um, so probably like me, um, or not, you might be interested in reading some of it to try and make your own analysis of things. Um, primarily um, what I'm going to try and do is um, work out what I think my costs might be. Um, and also depending on different tariffs I could run different simulations so I've done a little bit of work um, on that um, but first of all um, if you haven't already or don't know how um, let me try and show you how to um, create the um, data from the inverter itself now you can um, pick up um, um, some of the documentation from the um, website already so let me just switch over give energy um, actually have all the um, API calls so you can actually do a call to the inverter um, and then retrieve all of the information so you can do some testing here um, the guys at TerraVault have done a great job in terms of detailing it again so you can again read all of this and then they go through it all probably better than I will um, but um, it gives you some good examples, um, gives you some of the code a bit later on, which is here, um, and then tells you how to go through it. Um, I thought what I'd do is just run through my version just to show you how. Um, that's all listed there. Um, and then show you how to load it into Excel, which probably a lot of people know. Again, it might, might or might not be of interest. Um, later on, I'm going to show you how I use something else. Um, but to read more files and then generate something. So um, let me just quickly show you how to do this. So um, what I tend to do, the quickest way for me is, um, and again, you only need to do it once, create a text document. Um, I would call it something like read, um, give energy, dot ps1 and what that's telling it is that it's a um, PowerShell script um, it says on the other screen this might be unstable that's fine what you can then do is edit it so what you need to do is edit it so if you edit what it will actually do is it'll open in PowerShell script which is the guy the guys at TerraVault say the same thing now I've got this script here um, which I will just cut and paste so if I just copy that I'm just going to put it into the one I just created and you can see I've just pasted it now in here there are a couple of things so I slightly tweaked their version to make it run for my needs um, one of the things I've done is that I've put this um, add date um, because um, the way I wanted to run it was I wanted to pick the last two or three days just in case I did it in a part day or something so actually I've got a script that runs two or three of these together for the last few days. So this is going to run just for yesterday, complete set of data. This is your API key. Um, again, the guys tell you how to do that, but you generate it off your portal. Um, you generate an enormous API key you put in here, um, and that makes it unique and, and so that you can connect to your data. And then the serial number of your um, inverter, which I found on the side of my inverter itself. Um, and then a path, so where do you want it to store the file? So what I'll do, um, so for example, you might want to store it in, in your, on your desktop, which is what I'll do. Now what I'm gonna do is just pause for a second because I'm just gonna fill in this bit of information and then just shut the file. So bear with me a second. Okay, so I've just entered my token, my, my big long API key and my serial number. Um, and then what you can do is just hit run. So if you right click, you can just run PowerShell. What it's doing is actually running it on a different screen at the moment. Um, what it will do is it will just return, for me it's the blank screen, and then just shut. What actually has happened is it's now created on my desktop um, a different file, which is this, data points. And then if we edit this, open with, um, we can open it with Notepad. Um, I'm happy you can open it all the time or just this once if we open notepad we've now got the JSON file so we've got the output of the inverter 
Um, now, one thing I noticed is this is for yesterday. However, for some unknown reason, my data seems to start the, the 11 o'clock the night before that. So I've, I've logged a call with Give Energy at the moment. I, I think it might be my um, my time zone um, is currently showing GMT, um, but I'm not sure. So, so in principle, this gives you a set of data. Now, the interesting things you're looking at, well, I'm looking at, uh, the today bits. So in here, how much solar have I produced? And then the grid, how much have I imported and exported? So I can then do what I want with it. Um, again, just to show you, if I scroll down, this is... Uh, so this is uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon, um, and we can see that I've... Um, solar is 7.8, and then I've imported and exported. Actually, if we go a bit further, we can probably see it a bit more than that, because... Um, uh, this is a total, here's today, so 6.2, import, export and solar. So not a fantastic day for solar, but anyway. So here's, this is the JSON file, and again you can interrogate it. Now what you can do is then use Excel if you want to, 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 to read the information. So if we open Excel... create a new one. Um, what we can do, just a blank worksheet, um, we can run the PowerShell. Right, so what we want to do is basically load this data. So what we can do is if you hit data, you can do get data from a file and then you can pick JSON file. So we can pick our specific file, which is in my desktop and this one. It's now loading it, interpreting it. So when it opens, it opens it in quite a, a strange format because it's a JSON layered format. Um, so the quickest way I found to do it was if you click on the word list, what it's doing is it's building a set of steps so that you can repeat this going forward. Um, so uh, click on list, click on, uh, hang on. Just click on to table convert. Click on it. If you move, I didn't click it. Then no delimiters, just leave that alone. Click OK. And then expand it out. Ah, so expand this out now. What we'll start to see is, is the breakdown of that file. So in this example, I want today and time, so I want the time of it and today. I can then drill down, I can then expand this back out, and I want the next level which is select the solar, so I'm interested in that. And then what I've now got is all of my solar data in on a, coming in as it would from that file, so I'm just reading every single record of that file. Um, what I can then do is close and load, that will then give it to me in this format. So again, I can see every single timestamp. So this, you can see all of the times going in. 7.38, 44, 49, as we're going through the day. And then, because this is in the Excel Power Query, what we can do is add another column um, to make it work all the way down. So we can add the same formula all the way down. So let's call it... Um, uh, variance and then what we can do is we can say um, equals sum so we want oh, not in that one let's take this one equals sum so we want the that and then we want to subtract the day before and then as we scroll down what we can see is this is the variance so now what we've got is the variance on each of the time zones and then the total should give me um, it gives me a count because i'm reading some letters so if i just read the numbers what i've now got is a sum at the bottom right you can see down here a sum of 8.2 so now by reading the data i've got each of the individual times 
and the amount of solar that was then created. And then obviously you can go ahead and do what you want with that in terms of Excel. Um, because it's a data source, what you can do is just, if you run this script, um, obviously it will overwrite that one, you can just refresh this data. So if you do data refresh, um, it will just keep loading this file. So you may want a mechanism for loading different files, but just a bit of thought to load some numbers so that you can actually see your solar um, information by time. After I'd used Excel for a little while, I must admit, you know, it was good to get all the data loaded. Um, I did find there were a few limitations, you know, in terms of loading files and this, that and the other. So um, I then decided that I'd go a little bit step further. So um, I've got access to um, um, tools from work, which allow me to, to do some better data analysis. So um, what I've managed to do, so this is the portal at the moment. So you can see at the moment this is 903 um, and we had gen 17 generated today. Um, so if I look at yesterday, because I did this yesterday, this is the a Power BI report that I actually put together using all of the data that I've um, combined together, again, not using the Excel, um, to work out what my um, solar um, output is, my generation is. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to do this. Um, um, the main one is that I can find out or estimate how much I'm spending, which is quite a sad way because British Gas will tell me and so will um, lots of other places. Um, but the other thing was I wanted to, just as a bit of fun and something to do, work out what my cost difference would be is if I used something like Octopus Agile. So what I've done is I've built like a, a simulation, I guess, using some tools. Um, that mean that I can actually vary um, the amount, the, the cost of things, the payback, and also um, uh, if they've got reduced times. For instance, at, uh, Octopus Go, where you can have four hours at 7p, I built a simulation to do it so that ultimately I can try and work out what would be the best tariff for me to go on. Now, this is my version. Again, I need to just check all the numbers at some point but as my monitor from British Gas is still broken um, I have absolutely no idea and obviously the app doesn't work and nothing does so I've absolutely no idea how much electricity is costing me particularly so again this is quite a good estimate for me in terms of what I've done so now this is PDF at the moment um, I will if I can get a second I will connect to Power BI and show you how it, how it works but so ultimately my inverter has in total has done 886 but for some unknown reason, if I sum all the days, I seem to be a little bit short. I don't know why. I've built this so that it tells me yesterday's um, uh, uh, generation and then the previous day, and what my actual expected cost and what it would be. And this is total, so this is all of my data for the last six weeks. What I would actually have paid if I'd have been on Octopus Agile. Um, if it's correct, you can see that clearly Octopus Agile. Um, I would be paying a lot less money, which is where I want to get to, is not paying any money um, for my electricity. Um, the reason is that I'm not on Agile is because I'm trying to get my monitor sorted and all my uh, that stuff, so I'm just leaving it with, with British Gas at the moment. This is my generation over the past X amount of weeks, um, and you can see just some nice little graphs, and this is day to day. Um, this is sliding, possible. Um, what I also did was then obviously had to build in the Agile um, tariff rate, which I got from a, another website. Uh, I forget the name of it now. Um, I'll try and put it in the link. Um, and they they output all the daily rates. So I fed that in to have a look. And that's how I'm doing all my comparison. So every half hour, I'm looking at my consumption from my inverter um, by, by making it fit to the half hour and then costing it accordingly this is where it gets a bit more complicated so obviously you can see here that by day i'm trying to work out my generation my import my export this is what i would pay currently so this is what i would currently pay this is what they would pay me if british gas were actually paying me um this is and then there's the net so how much i'm actually going to pay out um, and then this is the octopus 
uh, version. So again, feeding all the agile in, and on some days you can see that obviously I've produced an awful lot of energy, which means that they should be paying me a little bit of money, which would be nice. Um, and it also works the other way. Um, oh, and some nice little um, dials to show me accordingly again. A um, little bit turn around the other way in terms of cost. So this is um, what I am paying at the moment, the lighter blue. And this is what it would be if I was in Agile. So again, can work out actually I'd be earning some money here, I think. And this is a sum of all the data of my um, grid import and export. So again, using the data I just showed earlier with the grid import, this is the total of everything. So we can see that obviously I'm producing a lot of energy and clearly it is whatever time that is, uh, 12, 30, um, obviously, which makes a bit more sense. Um, for some reason, I get a bit of a spike here. I'm obviously um, late at night and then obviously overnight again. My battery should sort a lot of this out when it comes, which should be hopefully in a week or two's time. Now, this was what I anticipate. This is what I think I'm paying now. Um, again, got no figures from British Gas. So, if I switch to this, this is what what I think it would be if I would be paying if they would be paying me three three p per um, extra generation. So, my 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 actual cost would go down, which is good to see. Again, I think that's 3p. Um, can then flick over. So I then did that for Octopus Go with four hours from midnight. So this is where they give you 7p. Uh, you can charge at 7p, so for a car and things like that. So you got your four hours. I think my rate would then my my cost would then go down to that. And then currently, I think if I did five hours from nine o'clock. I think my total uh, payment for the last however many weeks, three, six, seven or eight weeks, would be £48. So you can see, well, I can see that at the moment, uh, you know, Agile would obviously be a better one for, for, for paying back. Um, but anyway, um, same kind of charts, showing this, that and the other, yeah, okay. Hopefully it's been a useful insight into what I'm using the data for um, and hopefully you can get some use out of it if you're you're interested to do that. Um, I'll save you from having a live demo as um, I tried to record something and my machine ground to a halt trying to do it in typical live demo format. So um, the only other thing, two things I wanted to show you were um, another source of data is Solcast. Um, what they do is they try and predict um, the amount of solar in, solar um, you can generate. Um, so therefore you can try and work out when best to set your dishwashers or, or washing machines. Um, and that's a plug-in. So you can extract it with their API or you can use it and plug it into the portal, which is useful. When we look at that. Um, what you can do is look at it by day. So they try and give you an estimate as to when you're going to get the best. So it looks like tomorrow is going to be a pretty good day and then not so good for um, Friday. Um, the other thing um, I will do is in Power Graph, uh, no, Energy Graph, is switch to generation. Um, and this is, the, this is today. Um, what you can see is actually my amount, the amount of energy that I'm returning back to the grid or generating to the grid is a lot less at the moment, and that's down to the I boost that I had put in um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so again, what it does is it, it uses as much as it can of my own solar to heat the water um, before switching back over. Um, so again, my aim is that when I get my battery, my battery will do the same, so it will reduce these values. So ultimately. Um, I'm not feeding too much back into the grid, um, but just some extra bits in there for you. So thank you for watching and goodbye.